Hi, welcome back to another video. Do you feel pain when you lift your arm up over your head past shoulder height? What about when you reach your arm behind your back? Shoulder impingement is one of the most common causes of shoulder pain, tears and other shoulder issues that just suck. If fixing shoulder impingement forever is the reason you come to this video, you are in the right place. It is my belief that increasing your understanding of the problem significantly enhances the effectiveness of the corrective exercises. I will therefore try to explain to you the common causes of shoulder impingements as well as the basic shoulder anatomy. I will also demonstrate two easy tests which will help you to determine if your shoulder pain is indeed caused by impingement. If it is, the exercises in this video will be very beneficial for you indeed. So watch till the end of this video and I will share a series of highly effective corrective exercises that will help with your shoulder impingement. If you like this video and find this useful, please click the like button. Please leave your comments below and share this video. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future weekly video release. Please also subscribe to this channel. This is completely free of charge but will have the channel to grow. Thank you. Fixing shoulder impingement takes time and patience. Let me first answer three questions for you in this video. The first one is, why did you get shoulder impingement? Number two, what can you do about it? Number three, how can you prevent it from happening again? To answer the first question, let's take a look at anatomy. The shoulder joint is a ball and shallow socket joint. It is formed from a ball on the top of your arm bone, humerus, and a shallow socket which is part of your shoulder blade, the glenoid fossa. This space directly beneath the acromion and the shoulder joint is called a subacromial space. The tendon of one of your rotator cuff muscles, the supraspinatus, sits in the middle of the subacromial space. Within the subacromial space, there are also the long head of the biceps tendon and the coracoacromial ligament. A small fluid lining bursa cushions these tendons from the roof of the arch, which helps to reduce friction between these structures. When you move your arm away from your side, the rotator cuff works to keep the ball centered on the socket. When your arm reaches shoulder height, that is horizontal height, the subacromial space is narrowed. Above and below horizontal, the space is larger. You have impingement when your supraspinatus tendon get rubbed against the underside of your acromial process above as you lift your arm up as the subacromial space decreases. This will cause the tendon to fray which can result in tendon tear. We do not know why some people are susceptible to having these problems. Sometimes there is a predisposing event that makes the shoulder painful. For example, overuse, a new overhead arm activity such as playing badminton, DIY, pruning or hedge trimming in the garden. This may cause irritation of the tendon which gives pain and weakness. Once the tendon becomes affected, it swells, filling more of the space, which increases the chance of the tendon and bursa becoming pinched. Shoulder impingement is very common and it is the most common problem of the shoulder. 20% of people will have symptoms at some time in their lives. It most frequently begins in the middle age between ages of 45 to 65. The main complaint is one of pain, often felt on the outside of the upper arm. A classic presentation is of a painful arc of movement when the arm is lifted out to the side and up to your ear. These correspond with the narrowing of the subacromial space. Pain is also commonly felt on twisting movements such as putting on jackets and coats on. Pain is often worse through pushing exercises and typically get worse on anything overhead. When the inflammation is active, you may even experience pain at night when your arm is resting. But before we start with the corrective exercises, here are two really quick tests you can do to see if your shoulder pain is caused by a shoulder impingement. The first test is called the empty can test. The first thing you need to do is to raise the arm ahead of you up to 90 degrees and go out to about 30 degrees, thumbs facing the ceiling. Now turn your hand around, thumb facing down. And now with the other hand, I'm going to apply pressure on this arm, push it down, resist it with the affected arm. And if this causes you a pain in the shoulder, you're struggling with an impingement. The second test is the Hawkins-Kennedy test. Raise your arm to the side up to 90 degrees. Bend your elbow, bring it across in front of your chest. Place your other hand here on the elbow. Now internally rotate your shoulder by rotating your arm down. Now bring the affected arm across the chest even more. Now if these causes you a pain in the shoulder, you are dealing with a shoulder impingement. Remember, I asked three questions at the beginning of this video. First question, why did you get your shoulder impingement? 
I have already partially answered the first question by briefly going through the anatomy of the shoulder. Let me now fully answer the first question by examining the causes of shoulder impingement. First cause, muscle imbalances around your shoulder, typically caused by poor postural habits such as spending too much time hunching over your computer. These tighten the muscle of your chest, which pulls your shoulder forward into a rounded position. Plus, it also weakens the important back muscles that are supposed to keep it back in place. The next reason is what you do during your workouts. Where you worsen the muscle imbalance previously mentioned by overtraining your pushing and internal rotator muscles, while at the same time neglecting the often overlooked rotator cuff and scapular muscles. These are the ones responsible for keeping your shoulders healthy. To answer the second question, what can you do about it? That is, how to fix shoulder impingement. The first step here is to create more space in your shoulder joint. This helps relieve the pinching on your supraspinatus tendon and as a result, the pain that you're feeling. Well, to do so, we need to activate the various muscles you have been neglecting and have weakened over time. Most of the studies that have analyzed subjects with impingement find a decreased activation of the lower trapezius and the serratus anterior on the injured side and weakness in the external rotators of the shoulder. Meaning that to fix shoulder impingement, we want to focus our efforts in activating and strengthening these specific muscles with various exercises and stretches. The first muscle, the lower trap, can easily be activated and strengthened with a simple body weight progression. Level 1 involves first lifting your chest off the ground slightly by engaging your mid-back muscles. Then raising your arms up while externally rotating your shoulders by turning your palms out and then pulling your shoulder blades back and down as if you are trying to reach your fingers down towards your feet. These are the two primary functions of the lower traps and the key to activating them. Hold this position for 10 seconds and then repeat for a few more reps. As you perform this exercise, you should feel a strong activation just above your lower back. Then as you get stronger, you can progress to the next progression. But still apply the same concept of raising your chest off the ground and focusing on squeezing your shoulder blades back and down. Next, we're going to strengthen the serratus anterior. We're going to focus on activating it in the first place. So, first assume a wall plank position with your forearms on the wall. Then think about pulling your shoulder blades down and around your ribs by pushing away from the wall with your forearms. You should feel the contraction in the region shown here. If you can't feel anything, try to round your back as you push your forearms into the wall. Hold for 30 seconds and then repeat for a few more repetitions. To progress this, you can start adding overhead movements if you can do so pain-free by using a resistance band to help slide your forearms up and down the wall as you actively push against it. If that progression causes pain, then switch it out for the push-up plus. This is where you apply a similar technique but by pushing into the ground instead of onto the wall. Lastly, we need to strengthen the external rotators. We will perform the sideline external rotation with a light dumbbell or a water bottle. It is helpful to add a rolled up towel under your upper arm, as this has been shown to help to prevent compensation and boost activation by 20%. Next, pull your shoulder blades back and down by activating your lower trapezius and keep them locked. Then simply rotate your arm upwards while keeping your elbow pinned to your side. When done properly, even with just minimal weight, you can quickly feel a burning sensation in your shoulders. This signals to you that you are successfully activating and working your weakened external rotators. You can progress if you can do this exercise without pain by adding a raise at the end of the movement. These will help to train your external rotators in a more functional, three-dimensional manner and will be the key to regaining your ability to press overhead pain-free. To answer the third question at the beginning of this video, how to prevent impingement from recurring? Well, to do this, we need to address the root cause. As I've mentioned earlier, these lies in the various mobility restrictions created by a sedentary lifestyle or extended periods spent in poor posture. The exercises we did earlier may help to alleviate pain and improve shoulder function in the short term. But it is not enough. 
The truth is that a lack of mobility in key areas can cause you to continue having recurring shoulder issues in the long term. This is particularly because the ways your body will compensate during exercises. And to be very honest, no amount of rotator cuff strengthening would truly fix the issue. This is why the next step, you need to focus on mobilizing some of the Titan structures and address the poor positions that likely caused the issues in the first place. Now I'm going to demonstrate this simple drill to improve your thoracic mobility, as a lack of which can have an impact on your neck and lower back. For example, if you hunch forward a lot, your cervical spine has to compensate and extend backward for you to remain upright. Your lower back has to arch backward to maintain your center of gravity. All this can predispose you to neck and back pain. This banded shoulder dislocation exercise is great for improving your shoulder mobility. Stand with your legs under your hips, squeeze your butt and lightly brace your core. Take a band and push the band apart with your palms facing away from each other and pinky up. From there, bring your hand overhead and down towards your butt and then back overhead to the starting position to complete the rep. And secondly, you need to address the most problematic areas, the pack and the mid-back. When your packs are tight, they pull your shoulders into this forward rounder position. To help to mobilize them, all you need is a wall or something to prop your elbows against. Keep your elbow at 90 degree and brace your core. Lunge forward gently until you feel a stretch in your pack. Then slide your arm up and down slowly to stretch out the different fibers and muscles of your chest. Do this for 30 to 60 seconds and then switch sides. After this, we're going to work on your meat back with this following simple and yet effective thoracic extension move. Now place your elbows on top of a bench with your hands together. Sit your hips back into your heels and simultaneously drop your chest towards the ground. And hold that bottom position for a few deep breaths before repeating for more repetitions. So by working on these two specific areas while focusing on just being more aware of your posture throughout the day, you will be able to address the root cause of your shoulder pain for long-term success rather than just for short-term relief. Just to summarize, you will need to do this every single day indefinitely if you simply choose the right exercise to include in your workouts, while making an effort to move more and be more mindful of your posture throughout the day. You will be able to keep these muscles strengthened and prevent imbalances from occurring without having to do tons of different corrective exercises every day. Well, until next week, take care. Thank you for watching until the end. If you like this video, please click the like button. Please leave your comments below and share this video. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future weekly video release. Please also subscribe to this channel. This is free of charge, but will help the channel to grow. If you're interested in improving your health and fitness or losing weight, if you suffer from or wish to prevent back pain, please take a look at my book, which is now available from Amazon Worldwide. Thank you.